Hey everyone, Tio here. This is the artist review of the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. First of all, disclaimer, this is a review unit on loan from Microsoft Singapore. But this is not a paid review and all the opinions are my own. So in this review, I'm going to let you guys know what to expect if you're thinking of getting this laptop for drawing purposes. This video is going to be very long, so if you want to save some time, you can actually check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below. Let me give you the bottom line up front. So this laptop has fantastic build quality. The design is beautiful, the display is beautiful. When it comes to visual content creation, the overall workflow is smooth and lag free. The battery life is surprisingly good. I was able to get 8 to 10 hours. The drawing performance of the pen has also improved significantly. So when it comes to drawing diagonal lines, there is no longer the noticeable wavy jitter or wobble. However, there is still a downside. The lines, they can't taper smoothly and sharply at the same time. More on that later. Another downside to this laptop is uh, when it comes to editing videos, the editing process is smooth. However, exporting videos actually took a bit longer compared to other laptops I have tested. And the last thing I want to mention is, of course, the three deployment modes, the laptop mode, the tent mode, and the tablet mode. So that's one of the main selling points of this laptop. As to whether or not they are actually that useful, you can find out in this full review. Let's take a look at the items included in the box first. Other than the laptop, only the charger is included. That's the quick start guide and warranty info. This is a 102 watt charger that comes with the model with Intel i7 processor. The model with Intel i5 processor will come with a 65 watt charger. There is one USB type A port on the charger, which unfortunately cannot be used to transfer data. This is only for charging. And this is the proprietary surface connector from the charger. The Surface Laptop Studio actually supports USB-C charging, so you can actually use your own gallium nitride charger or GAN charger. For some reason, the 30 watt on this charger can charge the laptop, but not the 100 watt so your luck may vary. So this is the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio and as you can see the design is very clean and simple. We have rounded corners, the Microsoft logo which is very reflective. This material is aluminium and I really like the textured surface on it. Weight of the laptop will vary depending on which model you get. This one here, which has the Intel i7 processor, weighs 1.82 kg. And in terms of weight, I would say this is considered heavy for a 14.4 inch laptop. And the build quality is extremely solid. This laptop feels extremely dense. Thickness is 1.89 cm, which is thin enough for me. And notice this two-tier design. There is the upper tier and the lower tier. There are grills on the left and right side of the laptop, and these are for the fan exhaust and audio. The audio quality is really good. It's loud and it's clear. And on the left side here, we have two USB Type-C ports. These two ports support USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 with speeds up to 40 gigabits per second or 5 gigabytes per second. On the other side, we have a Surface Connect port and a 3.5 mm audio jack. The thick black line that you see sandwiched between these two parts is the thickness of the display. With the exhaust coming out from both sides, if you are using a mouse, your hand can be hit by hot air, especially when you're pushing the processor or playing games. Even with my mouse at this distance, I can still feel the hot air. So this is something gamers have to take note of unless you don't game with your mouse. The fan noise is controlled at the maximum speed. It's not that loud. At least it's not as loud compared to other gaming laptops I have tested. The design beneath the laptop is very clean and minimalist as well. There are two long pieces of rubber with good grip on the table. There is no certification information or even the serial number. There are also no visible screws. So this area here is where you can attach the Surface SIM pen to for charging and for pairing. The pen is supposed to go underneath the laptop with the button facing downwards. 
However, even if you have the button facing the wrong direction, it doesn't matter because once the pen is close to the laptop, the magnets are so strong that it's actually going to turn the pen and you can just push it down like this and it snaps into position. The pen fits very nicely here and together with the strong magnets, dislodging the pen accidentally is going to be very difficult. Let's take a look at the display and the keyboard. So there is face unlock and it works quite fast and effectively. The display has thin uniform bezels on all four sides. The corners are rounded off. Resolution is 2400 by 1600. So the aspect ratio is three by two, which is a good aspect ratio for productivity. Interestingly, the Surface Pro 8 with its 30 inch display actually has higher resolution than this laptop. The pixel density here is 201. Pixelation is not noticeable when working from one arm's length away. And this is of course a touch screen and it's very responsive. And the animation of the zooming in and out, it's very fluid because the refresh rate is 120 Hertz. Colors look great out of the box. I measure color support for 100% sRGB, 81% Adobe RGB, 88% P3, and 79% NTSC. Viewing angles are good as well with minimal color shift when viewed from extreme angles. And I measured a maximum brightness of 369 nits. The only downside to this display is it's kinda reflective. So as long as you don't have any reflections of the display, this is the image quality you can expect. This is a keyboard with excellent typing experience. The keys have good travel and feedback. The keys are backlit with three levels of brightness. The keys have good layout. The function buttons have shortcuts. This is the power button, which is not at the corner. This is the delete button, which is great. There is no fingerprint sensor because there is already face unlock. The only thing I don't like about this keyboard is there is no control button on the right side. Instead, they have this button here, which mimics the behavior of the right click, which you can already do with the touchpad. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, so without the control button here, I cannot control alternate delete with one hand. I cannot control L to go into the address bar of the web browser. I cannot control O to open, control plus minus to zoom in and out. The control button is definitely more useful than this. The touchpad is big, it's accurate and it supports finger gestures. And there is also haptic feedback. You can click or tap anywhere on the touchpad and when you press down, there is some vibration to simulate the touchpad being depressed. However, the touchpad actually doesn't move at all. But the vibration or the haptic feedback is very believable. The Surface Laptop Studio can be deployed in three different ways and this is one of the main selling points for the laptop. So this is the laptop mode and that's the lowest angle of the display. The next deployment is stage mode. So you just have to push this display down here. You can do it with one hand or two hands. And this part here will bend and you can push the display forward. So this will hide the keyboard at the back. The touchpad is still usable. So this is great for media consumption, uh, watching movies, or even for presentation. Now initially when this product was announced uh, and I saw this deployment, I thought it's gimmicky, it's not that useful. But the thing is, when you buy this laptop, you have the option to deploy it this way and you are probably going to use it this way because I found out that I actually like to use it this way when it comes to watching movies or using the laptop on my lap. And this is incredibly stable on the lap because the base is huge. There are magnets at the bottom to snap the display into position and the magnets are quite strong. Stage mode is not suitable for writing or drawing because if you want to write or draw, you have to bend your hand this way and this is not very comfortable. So if you want to write or draw comfortably, you can use tablet mode or as Microsoft calls this, the studio mode. So with studio mode, now you have a flat surface on the table for writing and for drawing. 
Now, if you are going to be working with a flat surface like this for long periods of time, hunched over at your desk, it's obviously not good for your posture. Ultimately, I would recommend you get a proper stand, preferably with adjustable height. If you're interested to get the one that I'm using here, check out the link that I have for you in the video description below. I am not able to say how durable this foe is because I only have this laptop for two weeks. It looks durable enough. So there is this piece of fabric that holds these two parts together. Hidden behind the display is where you can find the serial number, electric information and certification. So the display can be used this way as well. The orientation will adjust accordingly. And this is actually quite cool. Imagine you are seated at a table and someone in front of you, maybe your friend or your colleague, wants to know what you are working on. So you can just rotate the display to show him or her what you are working on. Overall performance of this review unit that I have here that has the Intel i7 processor is smooth and lag free most of the time except when I'm exporting videos in the background and editing photos in the foreground. Other than that, uh, you can expect very smooth and lag free performance with visual content creation, uh, creating digital art, graphic design and editing photos. So here I can see the edits instantly. It's just that when I import photos, it takes some time to import the photos into Lightroom. The read and write speed of the internal SSD are 2 and 1 gigabytes per second, respectively. This laptop will come with at least 16 gigs of RAM, which is sufficient for general use. If you need more RAM, you can upgrade it to 32 gigs of RAM. With 16 gigs of RAM, uh, when it comes to multitasking, it's very fluid. You can edit 4K videos on this laptop. The editing experience is smooth. However, when it comes to exporting the video, it takes much longer compared to other laptops I have tested. For example, it took me 9 minutes to export this 10 minute art tutorial using DaVinci Resolve. With other laptops that I've tested with the 11th gen Intel processor, I was able to get 6 or 7 minutes. So here, the export time is noticeably slower. However, video editing is definitely possible. I wasn't able to try or test Adobe Premiere because when I tried to export, the app just crashes, which is why I'm using DaVinci Resolve here for this test. The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti is a mid-range graphics card and can be used for some light gaming. This game is Hades and I'm able to get 65 to 70 frames per second. Remember the display actually has 120Hz refresh rate so if you play the right games you can get higher frame rates. And this is playing at native resolution so if you actually reduce the resolution or the graphics intensity you can achieve higher frame rates. With God of War this is now playing at 1080p and I am only able to get 30 to 35 frames. With native resolution of the laptop I can only get around 25 to 30 frames. That obviously is not ideal. So the graphics card is not that great for playing AAA titles. I don't have any 3D software to show you but I mean if it can play God of War it's probably going to handle 3D software without any issues. This is the Microsoft Surface Slim Pen 2 that can be used with the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Laptop Studio. This is not included, so it's sold separately for US $129. Here in Singapore, it's $179 Singapore dollars. There is one side button here for right click and an eraser at the back. There is no charging port, so to charge the pen, you have to attach it to the bottom of the Surface Laptop Studio for charging. The pen supports tilt and slightly over 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity. This is a hard tip with minimal or no movement. 
So this pen is designed like a carpenter's pen. It's flat on this side and broad on this side. It's very easy to get used to and it's quite comfortable to hold. I like the matte textured surface on it. When it comes to drawing, obviously you will need to buy the pen. You may also need to get a wireless keyboard so that you can use keyboard shortcuts with your drawing program. And you may also need to buy a proper tablet stand. So all those are extra cost. Let's take a look at the drawing performance. The first thing I want to say is this display is laminated. So when drawing, there is no noticeable gap between the line and the pen tip. The only gap you will see is the latency gap as the line is trying to catch up with the pen tip. And even so, the gap is not that big. Unless you are drawing really fast or you are drawing long lines all the time, chances are you are not going to notice any gaps. The app that I'm using here is Medibank Paint Pro and this app traditionally has very bad latency response. So the latency response on this laptop is actually pretty good and I'm not sure if it's due to the 120 hertz refresh rate because I have used this app on tablets with 120 hertz as well and the latency isn't as good as what I can see here. The Surface Slim Pen 2 also supports haptic feedback. So there is something inside the pen which will create micro vibration and the strength of the vibration will depend on how much pressure you apply. This feature feels a bit gimmicky to me. I'm not sure what the haptic feedback is supposed to mean. Is it to simulate friction? Because if it is, well, the pen tip is still quite smooth on the display, so it's not real friction. By the way, this is tilt sensitivity. And how smooth the transition of tilt will depend on the app you use. So the transition here is actually not that smooth. You can see the thin line and then it suddenly becomes very thick here. And haptic feedback is supported by very few apps. The only two apps that I know of that support haptic feedback are Concepts and Adobe Fresco. Here's the diagonal line jitter test. It is quite common for Windows touch screen devices to have problems or issues when it comes to drawing diagonal lines slowly. The problem I'm referring to is the wavy jittery or wobbly diagonal lines and here I can see the lines they are quite straight any variance you see is due to the pressure sensitivity just for comparison purposes let me show you the performance with the older surface pen So I can see some wobble. I am actually very surprised by the performance of the older Surface Pen because the wavy lines here are not as wavy compared to what I have seen with the older Surface Pros from 1 to 7. So maybe this display has a better digitizer. Initial activation force of the pen is good so you can draw very thin lines by applying almost no pressure but as long as the pen tip is touching the display you can get a line this is how thick the line really is unfortunately the lines don't taper smoothly or sharply so you can see the ends here they are rounded off they are not sharp this software is Affinity Photo, so the lines are not able to taper smoothly and sharply here as well. You can expect this performance with Adobe Photoshop too. And this is Clip Studio Paint. So you can see the lines, they can taper, but it's not smooth, it's quite abrupt. But at least it's not a rounded corner. Anyway, it still looks strange. And now I'm drawing lines with consistent width by applying consistent pressure. 
what I'm looking out for is whether the line can go back to being really thin. This will also tell us how good the initial activation force is. And this is pretty good. Let's draw some dots by tapping. You may notice that sometimes the dots don't appear. Let me try another app and it works fine here. The default pump rejection provided by the pen works quite well. So now I'm writing this with my palm on the display and there are no stray strokes. However, how good the pump rejection is will depend on the app you use as well. Because with this app, I can actually draw with my finger, I can draw with my palm. So there's still a risk of introducing stray strokes. With this app, Midibank Paint Pro, there is pen mode so i can actually draw with the pen obviously if i try to draw with my finger nothing will happen but i can still use finger gestures so there is no way for me to introduce straight strokes here the strokes not being able to taper sharply can affect your work so for example here i'm trying to draw hair and i want the strokes to taper sharply but as you can see, they are not. So the strokes here, they have rounded ends and it doesn't look nice at all. For artists who require more precise lines, this can definitely be an issue. So as you can see, there is no problem with thin and thick lines due to the pressure sensitivity but when it comes to tapering strokes it's an issue the glass is quite smooth for drawing so it's going to take some time to get used to it i don't recommend using a screen protector though because i mean a matte screen protector because it's going to affect the image quality of the visuals the cursor is always directly beneath the pen tip regardless of how you hold the pen so there is no offset with the cursor and that's fantastic let's try the eraser the eraser works there won't be any issues when it comes to coloring it's just that when you're drawing sometimes you need that extra level of precision with your line art and comic artists probably require that extra level of precision so here as you can see as i try to draw the strands of hair again um, I can draw thin lines, no problem. Actually, when I draw thin lines, it would actually disguise the rounded ends. But if I draw thick lines like this, you can see it doesn't taper that nicely. Let's draw some contour lines and it looks fine. Let's draw some cross hatching lines. So if I keep the lines really thin, um, you can't actually tell that they are not tapering. So this is how the quick sketch looks. Looks alright. This app is Concepts, so the style here is very stylized. In this case, I actually don't need the lines to taper. Uh, let's draw some lines here let me just zoom in to this uh, building so I don't actually need the lines to taper so whether you need the lines to taper will obviously depend on the art that you draw and here it works fine with uh, uniform lines let's add another building here and now I'm using a brush with pressure sensitivity so being able to draw diagonal lines like this without having to worry about jitter and wobble uh, that is a huge improvement over the previous surface pen so here i 
again the pressure sensitivity doesn't really matter for the style that I'm trying to create I have reviewed many Microsoft Surface products and battery life has always been less than ideal so I am very happy to say that this laptop actually has pretty good battery life with normal usage uh, like web browsing, watching videos, doing some graphic design and drawing I was able to get 8 to 10 hours of battery life and that is a huge improvement over the previous Surface Book 3 where I was only able to get 5 hours so with 8 to 10 hours it's fantastic for Microsoft Surface product if you're drawing most of the time at maximum brightness the minimum amount of battery life you can expect is maybe 6 hours which again is pretty good Alright, to conclude, I would consider the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio to be a good product. As to whether it's worth the money, you can decide for yourself based on the findings that I have presented. Alright, if you guys have any questions regarding the Surface Laptop Studio, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have been using this for a while now, share with me your experience, share with others your experience. I would love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching this very long video. See you in the next one. Bye!